Hello everybody and welcome back to more Pokemon Yellow. This is Dr. John Reborn. Still feeling a little bit sickly and yet I'm here back for more epicness and uh, let's start today's episode by well trying to do what we failed to do at the end of the previous episode awakening and and catching this fat ass in our way. So let's use the pocket flute here. And let's pray to God that we don't accidentally kill it this time around. Jesus, two fails in a row in the previous episode. That was kinda bad. Okay, so round three. I mean round two with the Snorlax. Snorlax from west to Saladin City. And same tactic, let's use Thunder Wave to, par Thunder Wave to paralyze it. <coughs> also, you must excuse my occasional coughing and sneezing during this episode because... Well, the thing is that... Well, luckily my ear infection, it's kinda started to get a little bit better. But just today, I've now gained a nice... His sneezy flew on top of it. I'm just gaining such a lovely conditions on top of each other, aren't I? So, we keep doing this, hopefully we don't accidentally end up killing this thing, and hopefully it won't successfully spam to its rest. This is looking kinda good right now. Please stay this way. Okay, come on, come on. One more, one more. This shouldn't be able to kill it. Only take it down to right hill then. Please don't hit fucking... Okay, headbutt. I'll take that. I'll take headbutt. Okay, and now... Cross your fingers. If this succeeds at the first great ball, I'm really, really surprised. So, do this. And... Come on, come on. Catch, catch, catch. Oh, oh. Yes! Woohoo! First try! Hot damn! And there you have it, Wolks. We now have Snorlax in storage. Not gonna use it on my team, but definitely one of those Pokemon that you want to catch. Just simply because it's so ungodly rare. Yep. You better be happy, you have all the reasons to be happy because you, you just got a Snorlax. Or actually, we got a Snorlax, but anywho. Uh, gonna go quickly to the Pokemon Center. After which, we're gonna continue on a little bit onto that road to the west, so that we can gain our actual final team. Um, actually, one of our our final team members. Yep, after such a long time, we are finally going to get a new one. And right here, around this area. Let's just heal real quick here. Also, I should probably save, since we finally actually managed to cut that goddamn Snorlax, so let's save here. So about if this is a bit stumpy start, but uh, uh, kind of hard to do any too solitary or glorious start, as I'm well. well yesterday it was a little bit easier to do because I only had an ear infection, which doesn't cause you to be a little bit drowsy. But yeah, now that I actually have a little bit of blue coming on, yeah, you just try to do a clear opening with a. I'm freaking flu who fussing your head. Let's see how well you manage to do it. Anywho, let's see. Okay, good for you, little girl. And what about you? Wait a minute, you're a dude? You're probably kind of suggested that you have a dress. Or are you cross dresser? Okay, let's leave it at that. And let's just head forward. And here we enter, enter to a little bit interesting road here. 
Walker, which is the Pikers Road. This is basically, just like the name suggests, a road where you can only travel with bicycles. So, even if you, for some ungodly reason, haven't used bicycle, bicycle earlier in this game, this is pretty much the point where you have to use it. Now, I know you can avoid these guys quite easily. See, now the interesting part of this road is that once you get somewhere around here, if you now go down here, you simply just keep going down, and it's actually really hard to come back up, so... You better have a pretty good steering here, in case you don't want to get caught into unnecessary trainer battles. Let's see how well I managed to do this. Slow down, slow down. If you go back up a bit, you can slow yourself down, so you can actually see if you're running into some... Right. Oh. oh! Yes! Okay, this is exactly where I wanted to land. Under this water area here. Because once we use the super rod that we also gained... Well, the only item that we actually gained in the previous episode... Hopefully we're going to catch one right here at the first try. You can get... We can possibly get to see... The one Pokemon that's going to be one of our final team members. And that Pokemon is... If this is it... You're not it. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Level 5. No, thank you. I got no use for you. It wasn't Tentacle. It most definitely wasn't Tentacle. Let's try again. I don't know how long this will take, but by god, I will catch that freaking Pokemon during this episode, even if this will take hours to do it. Which it probably won't. Okay, we finally found it, and it is level 25, I take that, that's good enough. Shelter, this is the Pokemon that I totally wanna catch here. And you may be wondering that, wait, why would you wanna shelter? Haven't you been dizzing it up during this LP? And the answer is, yes, I have been dizzing it up. But the thing is, I've only been dissing it up when it's something that our opponent uses, okay? But now that we can actually get and train one of these things, I'm gonna say, this is easily some of my favorite Pokemon in this entire game. Or in Generation 1 in general. For the reasons that may not be well displayed in this first evolution form, but once we evolve it into its next form, then, my friends, you're basically staring at the world's best physical wall. I didn't mean to spoil that much there, but eh, what can you do? Anywho, it's down to orange health, and let's see actually if, we, if I can get it in great form. Come on. Catch. Catch. Yes! First try! Woohoo! <coughs> oh god, my throat. Better avoid woohooing too much. Anywho, shelter. Water type Pokemon and, well, like I said, the first evolution isn't that good. You may be wondering why I would even bother catching it based on its stats. However, once it evolves, which I am actually going to do during this episode as well. No. Then, this Pokemon becomes incredibly good with one of its stats, Physical Defense. Alongside it gaining a type that is actually going to be very, very, very useful to us. But anywho, let's nickname this thing and I actually forgot what I had named it in my actual original run file. Uh, hold on. 
let me think of a name here. Uh, you know what? Let's actually be a little bit corny. Lieutenant Shield. Hell yes, we're gonna call it that. And ah crap, it was transferred into Bill's PC. Well, anywho, I'll see you guys at Pokemon Center at Celadon City. So, I'll see you guys in a second. Once I actually manage to climb back this goddamn road. Hopefully without any any doing any trainer battles. Okay, so we've managed to get we now have Lieutenant Shield out from the box and within our team setup. And now let's go to the one final thing before we can actually use this Pokemon and Um actually you have to excuse me for a minute because I need to check something real quick. I'll be back in a second. Okay, back, I just quickly had to check something out so that I am not doing anything too rash with this and luckily, well, I was a little bit off, but my first, first, well, what I recalled about this is wasn't exactly wrong. Okay, never mind, let's just do this and I'll explain afterwards. Now, you wanna talk? To one of these guys that sell no, this wasn't it. Was it on the second floor? Yeah, it was either second or third floor. So we need to go up a little bit more. And I think it's one story up. Mm, yeah, this is pretty much seems like the right address. So, what you want to do is to buy a water stone here. Buy one of these, and then we use it on Shelter, because Shelter is one of those Pokemons that can only be evolved with Elemental Stones, or Evolution Stones, whichever you want to call them. So, we shall now use Water Stone upon Shelter, and... It becomes Cloister, easily the greatest physical wall in all of Generation 1. This thing has absolutely insane physical defense, which basically makes this a one tough cookie to crack. No pun intended, but sadly. In I'll pay to that, I hope I used the correct term there, it sadly has a really low special defense, so... Special attacks are still going to do well, a lot of damage to Cloister, especially if there's some of the types that have advantages to it, but... But overall, since most of the attacks in Generation 1 or actually, what the hell am I talking about? It was in the later generation when more of the physical attacks started to appear, so... Well, I guess you could say that Cloister's extremely high physical... Cold defense against physical attacks... That might have been a little bit more useful in later generations... Or might be more useful... But Okay, I don't even know what I'm talking half the time here. Jesus Christ, I'm stumbling again. We are coming back to the abysmal depths and quality people, please bear with it. <clears throat> Anywho, 
Oh, so yeah, Cloyster is incredibly good with physical wall. But also, Cloyster is pretty much... Well, pretty much one of the earliest Pokemons that you can capture. Sure, at this point of the game, that's also partially Ice type. There are no pure ice types in Generation 1, they're all mixed ice and water types. Except for one, which sadly isn't available in Pokemon Yellow, Jinx, which is this ice and psychic type. But anywho, now that we got a cloister within our team, we might actually use one of the TMs that we got in along the way, and some of you may be wondering, anyone who's played this game a game, may a bit more, or anyone who's already played this game through, may be wondering that why would I use, use this certain TM onto a Pokemon that's supposed to learn to move within this TM naturally. Well, the thing is... Is one of the things that kinda suck when you you evolve well, shelter into a cloister with water stone is that well it basically stops it mo most of its natural draw move learn and sets. Basically means that if shelter is pretty much capable of learning a couple of ice moves on its own, if you evolve Fold shelter into cloister before it has any of those moves like I did, it cannot learn those anymore, so you actually have to use TMs to teach each them. So in a sense it might have been better if I had got level 30 shelter, but you know what? Let's just go with what we have. And besides, shelter is pretty good choice, at least within within our team to use this TM on, assuming that I actually picked up the right one. TM 13, Ice Beam, yep. We shall teach Ice Beam to Lieutenant Shield. Oh hey, Jeep Breaker would be able to learn it too. Kinda of tempting, but no. Better teach it to Lieutenant Shield, as he has type advantage. Ditch that he can add into this attack. Ice Beam overall is quite good attack, it does quite a nice amount of damage, especially to the types that are weak to it, including a type that I've mentioned quite a while back that doesn't have that many weaknesses in Generation 1, minus the Ice. And also this move has the slight additional effect to actually paralyze your opponent, so this thing can actually be really, 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 really useful if you're really lucky, other outside of just doing a crap ton of damage. <coughs> there we go, Lieutenant Shield with Ice Beam. Heck yes! So, within our final team setup, we have Lieutenant Shield. Sheepbreaker, Terra, and Voltaire. And remember, Ampero is our, shall we say, extra final team member in case we need to use him to replace He's some of our actual final setup team members. But anywho, Ampero is our fifth team final team member at the moment. We have still two more to get until it is all assembled. And... And... Hmm... Let me think... Uh... Well, I technically could stop this episode here, but then it wouldn't be really... M I wouldn't have complete... Wouldn't have accomplished that much, but... Hmm... You know what, guys? I'm just going to... The end is this episode once I've set up uh, set up the road well, to our next destination. So I'll see you guys back at Lavenger Town. Okay, 
So, here from Lavender Town, in the next episode of Pokemon Yellow, we shall adventure shout from Lavender Town and hopefully reach our next destination. Ton of so wait a minute. Ah. Uh. Okay, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm being too hasty here now. Which one should I? Actually, I'm being a little bit too hasty here. For God's sake. Why did I go back to Lavender Town when our actual destination is between Lavender Town and Celadon City? That being the city where we couldn't enter before and where we couldn't pretty much do anything before we. We're done with the businesses back at Saladin and Lavender Town. Saffron City. So, this is the location where we shall venture next time on Pokemon Yellow. And so, I do believe we might as well call the episode up here. We managed to capture Snorlax and get a new final team member. I say that's a pretty good catch for one episode. So, until the next episode of Pokemon Yellow, well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Dr. John signing out and saying bye bye everyone. See you later.